hello guys welcome back to my channel if it's your first time viewing welcome here and i hope you and hope this video add value to you please like share comment and subscribe to this channel today we are going to be making we're going to be making a kimono and also a palazzo trouser but this trouser we're going to be inserting rope on the waist is not a band we are going to be using rope on the waist instead So now let's start there. So first thing first, we're going to be folding our fabric into two and you're going to be using your, the widest part of your body. The moon is going to be passing your hip, using your hip. Your hip is the widest part of your body. But if your kimono is going to be ending on your waistline, you're going to be using your bust as the widest part of your measurement. For this video, I'm going to be using my hip, which is the widest part of my body. And I'm going to be dividing it by four and I'm going to be adding my desired allowance. For the allowance I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using 3 inches extra. Why? Because I want the kimono to be very free on my body. I don't want it tight. If you know you want yours tight, you can add just 1 inch or half an inch. But if you know you want yours to be free, very free, you can add 3, 4, 5, depending on the allowance you choose to add. So for this video, I'm going to be adding just 3 inches allowance. Then after measuring that, you measure the length of your kimono. So now let's let's get started. I'm going, to, so I'm going to start off by measuring my shoulder arm hole. I'm adding extra 3 inches to my arm hole because I want it very, very, very free. So you can choose to add whatever allowance you're adding for your arm hole, depending on what you're trying to achieve. I'm measuring my bust measurement on that line. On this kimono, we are not curving the arm hole. We're not doing any curve on this because the excess part of the arm hole, we're going to be using that as our sleeve. You just see me as I'm doing mine because I'm not cutting it out. After measuring your bust, from your bust arm hole point, measure one inches inward. You just measure one inches from that point to the end of the kimono length. So after that, you cut it out to just have that little bit of um i'm like on a straight shape just watch me as i'm doing mine so i've actually cut it out after then the next thing i'm going to be doing because this fabric is folded into four that's the first center front and the second center back so we're going to be marking the neck measurement on this for the front so we're going to be measuring for the front we are taking in next is three inches for the front for the back also the wideness is three inches But for the front, we are going to be giving a little bit of slanty curve. What I'm going to be doing from that, my three inches line, I'm going to be marking 10 inches downward, downwards. After you mark your 10 inches, on that 10 inches point, they are going to be going in with half an inch. After you go in half an inch, you just connect. You're going to be connecting the three inches to the half an inch that you've measured on your bust line. After you connect it, you go down to your waistline. After you connect it, you go down to your waistline. And I measure one inches upwards. If 
after you measure the one inches upwards that your half inches that you've measured on the bust line you're going to be drawing a slant curve to meet the one inches we measured up from your waist i don't know if you understand just get a slight curve from the half inches you have on your bust line down to the one inch you have from your waistline so you curve it a little not too obvious but just a little so after then you are going back to our back neckline three inches for the wideness and one inch for the depth of our back neck after then you connect the line and you cut it out Then for after you cut it out, what you do, remove the back piece so you won't forget yourself and cut the front and the back together. Just remove the back piece first before cutting out the front because you know, the front neckline is totally different from the back. After you remove the back piece, you fold properly your front piece. After folding properly, you cut those parts we measured from the waist. The, okay, from the waist. The one inch to the half inch on the bust to the three inches measured on the waist to cut it out then the remaining part from the waist to the down you just cut a straight line downwards you open it out After you've done that meaning you're going to be having two pieces for the front and one piece for the back two pieces for the front and one piece for the back after doing that you spread your you can just spread your kimono on the floor just to arrange it properly just where i'm doing mine and after we've done that we're going to be joining the both shoulder together we are joining the shoulder with the little sleeve we got from the armhole we just connect both of them together After you've done that, if you feel that you want a longer sleeve, like you're not satisfied with the sleeve that you have, because my fabric is a little bit small, so I could not get a full length sleeve from my fabric. That's I'm going to be attaching extra sleeve to it. But if your fabric is wide enough for you to achieve a long sleeve from it, fine, that's good. But if it's not enough, you can attach. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be attaching extra fabric to my sleeve so I can get a long sleeve from it. But if you feel that the sleeve you are having from the one you've cut out on your own is okay for you fine you can go ahead and use that but this is my own so i'm going to be attaching it on both sides on the right arm and also the left arm so i've attached it so after attaching what i'm going to be doing now so i'm going to be piping the edge of our sleeve I'm just going to be joining everything the both sides with half an inch from the edge of the sleeve down to my arm hole and down to the length of the kimono. I want to be doing that on the both sides. Like we are almost done with this kimono, guys. If you want to do it just where i'm doing mine what i did was from the neck from the joining of my from the joining of my shoulder i measured downward three inches from the joining of my shoulder
we are going to be measuring the full length the full front length of the kimono meaning the divided part of the front piece are going to be dividing it around dividing it from the one end point through your through to your neck and also to the other end points of the other piece of the kimono so you measure it round like the, the like the slitted front you measure it round because they're going to be attaching a band but this band are going to be attaching it halfway through the neck no, you're not going to be attaching it full if you feel you want to attach yours full fine you can just go down and run through from the beginning to the end after measuring the full round slit measurements what you do is you um cut out a piece so it depends on how you want if you want yours to be very wide if you want yours not to be too wide you can cut out six so you can fold it to be three depends on what you want you cut out four and a half fold it to get two inches now after doing that you are going to be um notching the middle point of the band you made like fold it together equally and top notch the middle part of it so that middle part of it now is going to be that middle part of the band that you've notched is going to you're going to be starting it with the middle part of your neck that you've notched your back neck that you've notched so you're going to put that notched part of your band to the notched part of your middle your middle neck for our kimono you're going to be starting from there either you start whether you start sewing from the right like from the middle to your right or you start from the middle to your left so you sew down to the three inches that you've notched at the front you stop it there You know the remaining part of the front now the edges will be rough a little bit so you can either with that with an english weaving or you slightly fold it in for it to be neat so you have to option either either weaving that edge to be neat i want to be folding the down part of our kimono you just fold it in neatly with Next thing we're going to next we're going to be working on now is our trouser. On my previous video, I showed you guys how to make a short knicker with an elastic band on the waist. The crouch, try to get the waist, the hip, the crouch line, and also the and before getting those measurements, I told you guys that you're going to be leaving three inches. If you're putting in elastic or you're putting in rope on the waist of your trouser, you're going to be measuring two and a half or three inches. If you are making if you're putting rope on the waist, measure two and a half. You're putting elastic depending on the kind of elastic if it's the one of other putting your two and a half inches you measure from that point down to nine inches that's your hip line to get your crouch line you're going to be dividing your hip by four your hip by four plus three inches to get your crouch line after getting your crouch line i'm going to be putting our crouch measurement on that line you put your crush measurement after you put your crush measurement the way you have as a crush measurement you divide it by two to impute on your crush line
front part of the trouser are going to be we are going to be creating two holes on each side of the front part so that our rope can pass through we can have a place place to start the rope and also a place to finish the rope so we are creating two holes for our front piece you can just use your scissors to cut it out neatly after cutting that out the next thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be getting a bb pin fixing your rope and insert it through that part on the waist that you folded you should start it through round to come out at the other side of the hole we've created so We're going to be folding the damp part of our trouser. You just fold it around neatly. After folding it out neatly, we would after folding that neatly, the next thing you have to do is just to iron it to it to be flat and neat. Then we are done, guys. Thank you guys for liking and sharing. If this video add value to you, subscribe and share. And also see you on my next video. Bye.